Okay, it's Mr. Bison here, and in this video we're going to do every exam question that has ever been asked on Venn diagrams. Now, this is one that once you learn how to do it, it is, it is really quite straightforward, and there's quite a few questions on this one. So even if you just watch this video, hopefully it will teach you what you need to do here. So first of all, it says that the everything, this is the universal set, we're going to fill into this diagram all of the odd numbers less than 30. We know which ones should go inside A, which ones that should go inside B, and then we'll complete the Venn diagram to represent this information. So what I like to do to begin with is just see which of them overlap, which I'll put in the overlap, and the ones that overlap are going to be 15. Now what I'm going to do is I probably just go through the rest of the numbers and I fill in where they should go. So I'm going to do the odd numbers less than 30. That means we've got to start with 1, okay, that doesn't feature anywhere. 3, though, goes inside A. Then we have 5. Then we have 7. Then we have 9. Then we have 11. Then we have 13. 15 we've already done. Then we have 17, 19, 21 is going to go inside A. 23 doesn't go anywhere. We then have 25, which is going to go inside B. 27, which is going to go inside A. And then our last one is 29, which I'm just going to put at the top there. And I'm going to check, because they're the odd numbers less than 30, I should have 15 numbers. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's four marks, pretty hefty, really. It says that a number is chosen at random from the universal set. From all of these, what is the probability that the number is in the set A, U, B? This is the union of A and B. And the union of A and B is everything which is inside this A loop that we've got here and everything which is inside this B loop that we've got here. Oh, I've just noticed there's probably something I should have done. I should have labelled that this is A and this is B, just to make it clear that this is the A loop and this is the B loop. So we're going to count how many numbers are inside this set. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven out of, and we just now counted there are 15 numbers in total. So it's seven out of 15. So we have got the labels on the diagram. That was for one of the marks. And then we've got all of these numbers in the correct place and then seven over 15. Okay, another one to fill in this time. There are three loops that we've got here, and we're doing the even numbers between 1 and 25. Well, before I do that, I'm actually going to start off just finding which one is in all three. So 8 is in all three, which is going to go right in the middle. I'm going to see if there's any other ones that are in common. So I think it looks like they've got a 20 here and here. I don't think the rest are common at all. So I'm going to put the 20 between the B and the C, but obviously not in this part that we've got here. So doing all of my even numbers, 2 is going to go inside A, 4 doesn't go anywhere, so it's going to go on the outside, 6 goes inside B, 8 we've already done, 10 goes inside A, 12 doesn't go anywhere, 14 goes inside A, 16 doesn't go anywhere, 18 goes inside C, 20 we've already done, 22 goes inside C, and then 24 doesn't go anywhere. So because we're doing the even numbers between 1 and 25, we're going to expect there to be 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So definitely all filled in. It says a number is chosen at random from the whole set. Find the probability that it's a member of A intersection B, A and B. A and B means everything that goes inside the overlap of A and B. And there's only one number in there, so it's just going to be 1 out of... We said that there are 12 numbers in here, so it's just going to be 1 out of 12. Let's see if we've got this right. We've got the 4, 12, 16, and 24 on the outside, the 8 and the 20, the 8 and the 22, the 2, the 10, the 14, and the 6. Yep, that's how we've got it, and we've got the 1 and the 1 12th as well. Another filling in. So this time it's just the numbers between 1 and 9. Like I usually do, I'm going to find which ones are in both. So I think the ones that are in both is a 6 and a 9. So we're going to put 6 and 9 in the middle. 1 is inside A, 2 is inside B, 3 is nowhere, 4 is nowhere, 5 is in, well not nowhere, it's just outside A and B, 5 is inside A, 6 we've already put in the middle, 7 doesn't go in A or B so it goes on the outside, 8 is inside A, and 9 goes in here. Let's check we've got them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we've completed the Venn diagram for three marks. It then says a number is chosen at random from the whole set. Find the probability that it's in the set A and B. Well, the intersection is the part where they overlap. There are two numbers here, and there are nine in total, so it's two out of nine. So let's see we've got this right. 
here we've got the 347 on the outside, the 158, the 6, the 9, and the 2, and we have two ninths that we had on the bottom part. Another one where we fill things in, so we're getting the numbers between 1 and 10. The even numbers are going to be A, and then we'll do the factors of 10. So if I just start off doing the even numbers, that will be 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then the factors of 10, where you have 1 times 10, 2 times 5, and then obviously we've got the 10 from that 1 times 10. So the ones that are going to go in the intersection and the overlap, well, they both have a 2, and they both have a 10. So I'm going to put the 2 and the 10 in there. Now, 1 is going to go with the, starting off here, 1 goes with B. Let's do that, I'll underline that in red. We've then done 2. 3 doesn't go anywhere, so it goes in the outside set. 4 is one of the even numbers, so I'm going to put that inside A. 5 is a factor of 10, so I'll say that I've done this. 6 is an even number, so it's going to go here. 7 is just going to go on the outside. And then we have 8, which is going to go with A. And then we've got 9, which is our last one that goes on the outside. Let's check we've got them all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great, that's all filled in. A number is chosen from this. Find the probability that it's in A and B. A and B is the overlap. We know there are 10 numbers, so we're just going to say that it's 2 out of 10. If you want to simplify that, you can do, but you don't have to. So we've got 2 out of 10, and we've got all the numbers filled in correctly. This time they haven't given us the Venn diagram and we have to work out that it is a Venn diagram question. It's a five marker as well. It says 50 people were asked if they speak French or German or Spanish. Of these people, we know how many speak French, people that speak all three, it's French and Spanish but not German, German and Spanish, none of the languages, we've got a lot of information to process. And then later on we find out that two of the 50 people are chosen at random work out the probability they both speak only Spanish. So I think what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to draw a Venn diagram and I think that's going to help me think about all of the different values that should go in here. So I'm going to do my French, my German and my Spanish and I'm going to get rid of these little bits that they've filled in because I want them to be empty, just makes it a bit easier to see what's going on. So first of all, we know there's 50 people in total and it says 31 speak French. So if I do my French, my German and my Spanish, I actually can't put 31 in here because I know that in total it's 31, but not necessarily just in that place that we've got. So I'm going to have to come back to that one later on. So I'm going to just put a little dash to say I still need to do that. Two speak French, German and Spanish. Great. So I can put that in the middle and I can just say I've already dealt with this. Four speak French and Spanish, but not German. Well, French and Spanish, but not German is that bit. So I can put a four and I can cross that through. Seven speak German and Spanish. Well, German and Spanish is this whole section here. And there's two there, which means that bit needs to be a five. Now I've dealt with that. I can cross it off. Eight do not speak any of the languages. So I can put eight on the eight outside. It then says all 10 people who speak German speak at least one other language. So there's nobody here because these people only speak German, which says that actually there's going to be 10 people in this part. So I can put a three in this section. Now I'm going to cross that off because I've dealt with this. I'm going to go back to the very first one, which I didn't deal with, which was that 31 speak French. I don't know if I need that for the rest of the question, but I think it might be worth doing. So I'm going to do my 31 minus the 3, minus the 4, and minus the 2, and that tells me that there are 22 going here. It says that two of the 50 people are chosen at random, and we want to work out the probability that they only speak Spanish. Oh, we haven't actually even got that section down here, so I think there's perhaps a little bit more work that needs to be done. We know that that's a zero, right? Because they said that all the people who speak German speak at, one, at least one other language. So I haven't used this fact that was at the top that there's 50 people. This, 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 and this all needs to add up to 50. The thing that might confuse you, this Spanish, that's an S. So I'm going to highlight those to make it clear that those are labels. So this time I'm going to do 50. I'm going to do 50 minus all of those numbers. So there's 22, 3, 2, 4, and 5. How many have I done there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, and there's also the 8 on the outside. So I've subtracted those six different numbers, which means that our number that's left over here is going to be 6. So we now need to work out the probability that they both speak only Spanish. Well, only Spanish, there are going to be 6 out of 50 people who speak Spanish for the first one. And then the next person who gets picked, because there's now one less person, there's only going to be 49 people. And there's no longer going to be six people, there's going to be five people there. 
So let's put this on our calculator. Um, did I? Yeah, good. So I'm going to put this on my calculator. I'm going to do my 6 over 50 multiplied by 5 over 49. And as a fraction, we get that it's 3 over 245. So we've got 3 over 245. And that's because there is one less person. And there is one less Spanish speaker. Okay, let's see if we've got this one right with 3 over 245. Well, they've said 6 over 490. Let's just check that that's actually the same as what we've got. If they have said 6 over 490, yeah, that is 3 over 245. So we have got the answer, and it does say or equivalent, which is what we've got there. Nice easy one to finish up here. We're just going to be filling in these different numbers again. Always start off, what have they got in common? Well, they've both got a 6 and they've both got an 18. So I'm going to put the 6 and the 18 in here. Now it's the even numbers less than 19. So I'll start off with 2, which goes in B. 4 doesn't go anywhere, so I'll put it on the outside. 6 I've already done. 8 doesn't go in either A or B. 10 doesn't go in either of those groups. 12 goes inside A. 14 goes inside B, 16 goes on the outside, and 18 we've already done. So there should be nine numbers that are less than, uh, that are even numbers less than 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I think we've got those all filled in. We've got the 4, 8, 10, and 16, the 12, the 60, 18, and the 2, and the 14. They will allow you to put zero on the outside because technically you might count zero as an even number as well, but you didn't have to put zero there. So you'll see there's quite a few questions on this, quite a few questions on Venn diagrams. I'd say this one is the most challenging, particularly because of this extra part at the end. Um, but yeah, I think if, you, if you've if you looked through these videos and you've remembered stuff from your lessons, you should do pretty well on this one. If you found this useful, please do just like the video, share it with any friends who are studying, um, and just wishing you the best of luck with all of your exams.